Hello, I am a woman who has been in the bonds of matrimony for half a decade now. My journey post-wedding has been an eye-opener, making me feel deceived as my husband's true self began to unravel. I've heard opinions suggesting that numerous men tend to change and reveal their true nature post-marriage. This idea disturbs me deeply, and it even led my mother and me to contemplate undertaking the mission of molding my husband's behavior. As the festive season is drawing near, these memories are resurfacing, prompting me to share my tale. My initial encounter with my husband was in a professional setting, he was my superior. It was my introduction to the workforce, and despite my initial intimidation, he was the sole person to extend his support. My aversion gradually transformed into guilt and eventually into fondness. Eventually, I discovered that his feelings for me preceded mine, and it took him over half a year to gather the courage to express them. His straightforward and blunt demeanor initially repulsed me, but catching a glimpse of his softer side changed my perception, and I saw him in a new light. Following his heartfelt confession, we embarked on a romantic journey, leading us to marriage after two years. However, post-marriage, I observed a peculiar shift in his demeanor, particularly towards his family. While dating, he was noticeably frugal in his dealings with his relatives. Aside from a modest Mother's Day gift, he refrained from floral gestures and visits, justifying it by saying he had already sent money. In contrast, I would take it upon myself to send flowers and encourage him to visit. On holidays, he would briefly show up for breakfast before promptly departing for our dates, showcasing a blatant indifference towards his family. This made me wonder if all men are predisposed to such behavior, as I recall my father exhibiting similar tendencies before he changed his ways. But, how should I handle the situation if he continues to remain distant from his family? Perhaps it's actually for the better. It becomes exhausting when he starts meddling in every tiny detail, and being married to a mama's boy is challenging. If he maintains a certain distance from his family, his parents might not have high expectations of you as their daughter-in-law. From my perspective, this situation might not be entirely negative for you. My mother praised my husband for his dedication to his work and his exclusive affection for me. Heeding her advice, I thought to myself, indeed, a neglectful son might be preferable to an overly attentive one. If he were to start treating his family better after marriage, they would likely hold me in high regard and express their gratitude. Thus, when my husband popped the question, I didn't hesitate and immediately said yes. However, unexpectedly, post-marriage, he underwent a transformation, adopting a more caring attitude towards his parents. As the eldest and only late-born son, he urged me to be kind to his parents on his behalf. Initially, I believed he had matured and started considering his parents' feelings after tying the knot, but I soon realized I was mistaken. He expected me to call his parents nearly daily, send gifts, and personally prepare food for special occasions like birthdays or Mother's Day. I initially thought he was delegating these tasks to me because he was unable to do them himself, but as time went on, it became clear that he wasn't just asking, he was demanding that I perform these duties for him, which felt excessive. Furthermore, during our first holiday season as a married couple, I was anxious about visiting his parents' home. He tried to reassure me by saying, as you know, my parents had me at an older age compared to yours, so please be kind to them. I might be their son, but I'm too awkward and clumsy to do anything nice for them myself. Now that I've settled into married life, I have a clearer understanding of their perspective. I realize now that I wasn't the best son. Moving forward, I want to make amends and treat my parents better. I didn't want to criticize him since he appeared to have had a change of heart regarding his parents, but I couldn't help but wonder about the sudden change in his behavior. I also questioned why it fell on me to fulfill his responsibilities towards his parents. As the holidays neared, he expressed a desire to uphold his duties as a son, as Eleanor remarked. My mom is getting on in years, and she doesn't have the same energy she used to. As her daughter-in-law, why don't you go over and cook for her before the holiday? If taking time off work is an issue, 
we could prepare the food in advance and bring it to her house. It would mean the world to her. I was taken aback. Why was he entrusting me with the task of moving his mother emotionally? Was this really the man I thought I knew? Overwhelmed with frustration, I couldn't hold back and confronted him. Of course she'll be touched. But what would my family think if they knew about this? It's not as if we're collaborating to cook for your mother together, you're just asking me to do it all on my own. What makes you think this is okay? Why are you saying these things? Don't you understand your role and responsibilities as a son? I'm sure your parents would agree. What? Have you spoken to my parents about this? He retorted. Why are you getting upset? You told me to be more attentive to my family. I'm taking your advice and asking you to help me care for them, so why are you reacting this way? Honey, aren't you the one who's changed? For the first time since we got married, I felt a complete disconnect in our communication. The last thing I wanted was to engage in a futile argument or subject myself to his irrational justifications, so I chose to distance myself from him. Nevertheless, he persisted, expecting me to shoulder even more responsibilities for his parents. Have you called my mom today? She's been complaining about back pain recently, you should show more concern. I questioned him, how do you know her back is hurting? My mom told me when we talked on the phone, he replied. So, if you've already spoken to her, why do I need to call her again? I retorted. Because you're her daughter-in-law, that's why. Have you ever thought to call my parents just to check in, he argued. You know I'm shy by nature, whereas you're much more outgoing, I responded. Exasperated, I said, fine, but if we're going to do this, it has to be equitable. You can't just delegate your responsibilities to me while shirking your own. Being a son-in-law is different, it's always somewhat of a guest relationship. It might be awkward either way, but it's not the same for a daughter-in-law. A daughter-in-law is considered family. Family. How can I feel like family when I'm buried in work and can't even relax at home? I countered. Why can't you just look at the bright side? This is not a big deal unless you make it one. You're just being overly sensitive lately, that's why you're making such a fuss, he argued. Despite our newlywed status, I felt on the brink of madness, bending under the pressure of his constant demands to appease his parents. I warned him that if he continued this way, I would refuse to visit his mother's house, holiday or not. This only angered him more, as he questioned my commitment to our marriage. In that moment, I wished I could annul the marriage. The argument lingered for days, but despite our disagreements, I purchased some fruit and visited his mother's house for the holiday weekend. My husband, who claimed such devotion to his mother, spent the visit watching TV, retreated to a room, and slept the entire time. I was stunned. My mother-in-law hadn't prepared any food at all. The moment I arrived, she instructed me to head to the store. I was disgruntled by her blatant unfairness, yet I found myself unable to voice my dissatisfaction and obediently followed her orders. The market was packed due to the holiday rush, and this was only the beginning of my ordeal. I had heard from friends who were already married that holidays typically turned into laborious days for daughters-in-law. In my own family, we would all gather at my grandmother's house, and everyone chipped in to prepare the festive meals. Yet here I was, toiling away, while my husband was lounging comfortably, snoring loudly enough to give anyone heartburn if they held back their words. Seizing the moment when my mother-in-law stepped away to use the bathroom, I decided to wake my husband up. I firmly told him to get up and lend a hand. His response, however, was absurd. Holiday meals are traditionally prepared by the women. Just think about what my mom would say if I suddenly started doing things I've never done before we were married. I stayed out of the way to spare you from her criticism. Are you implying you were actually considering my feelings while you were asleep? You never used to talk like this before we got married, but now your behavior is just worsening. It's a real issue when you change this drastically. 
His only response was to roll over, attempting to return to his nap, which infuriated me to the point that I couldn't restrain myself, I slapped him hard on the back and kicked him out of the room before storming back to the kitchen. When I returned, I found my mother-in-law back at work, picking up where I left off. There's no need to wake your husband. He's exhausted. We can handle this quickly, just the two of us. Perhaps I'm old-fashioned, but it just doesn't seem right for men to be bustling about in the kitchen. Isn't it customary for men to handle the outdoor work while women take care of the household, she stated, reinforcing the very traditional gender roles that had frustrated me to begin with. Mom, I also have a job and work outside the house, just like my husband does. Well, that's because you choose to work, she replied, as if that justified the disparity. It's different when you opt for it. The more I attempted to communicate with my mother-in-law, the more I realized how much she and my husband were alike, and it left me questioning whether I was the odd one out in this situation. Regardless, I found myself standing and cooking for the entirety of the holiday, while my mother-in-law intermittently complained of back pain and took breaks in the living room. Exhaustion overwhelmed me, yet I had no choice but to continue. Around 5 p.m., my father-in-law returned from his work at a nearby store and immediately declared it was time for his dinner, adding another task to my already full plate. Frantically, I juggled cooking the holiday meal and preparing dinner for my father-in-law. Once the table was set, my husband finally decided to join us, hair tousled and eyes groggy from his nap. He sat down and began eating and drinking with his father as if nothing was amiss. My mother-in-law handed me a bowl of stew, instructing me to share it with her directly from the bowl. Mom, we should really have individual bowls for our food. I'm not comfortable sharing like this. Her response was sharp and dismissive. Why are you making such a fuss? We need to finish these leftovers, otherwise, they'll just go to waste. It tastes perfectly fine, just bring a spoon and eat. Was I being treated as some sort of human garbage disposal, expected to eat up leftovers to prevent waste? I couldn't help but feel devalued and used, and I firmly declined her offer. She didn't verbally express her displeasure, but her actions spoke volumes as she began to eat with visible anger. My emotions got the better of me, and tears began to flow. I was so overwhelmed by the situation that I lost my appetite altogether. Why should I be relegated to eating leftovers after slaving away in the kitchen all day? Do other daughters-in-law endure this too? The men don't lift a finger yet enjoy the feast without a word of gratitude. It was becoming painfully clear that this was the grim reality of my married life. As the first day of the holiday came to a close, my body was racked with pain from the physical exertion, but my husband merely dressed up and headed out to meet his friends. Are you seriously going out to have fun now? I asked, incredulity in my voice. These are childhood friends I hardly get to see, and we always catch up during the holidays, he responded nonchalantly. And what about me? Am I supposed to just stay here alone? What's the problem? This is your in-law's house, plus you said you're tired. Just rest up while I'm gone. See you later. His casual dismissal was the last straw. I understood then why the post-holiday period led so many couples to contemplate divorce. Watching him leave so cheerfully, even whistling, I was overcome with frustration. In a moment of defiance, I decided to go out and meet my own friends. You're going out too. At this hour. He asked, surprised. Why shouldn't I? If you can go out, so can I. I'm going to see a friend who lives nearby. But where are you headed? I retorted. I used to meet up with my friends all the time before we got married. Since you're just doing what you've always done, I figured I should too. I'm sure my friends are already out having drinks. So just because I'm going out, you think you should too. But you're a daughter-in-law, he said, astonishment and disapproval in his voice. You're unbelievable. I've been working all day, while you've been enjoying the food I made, 
and I didn't even get to eat properly. I'm starving. Don't you care at all? You act like the world's greatest son, but what have you actually done? I'm a cherished daughter in my own family, too. Unable to contain my anger any longer, I unleashed my frustration, and our heated argument escalated. It was then that my mother-in-law, having overheard our quarrel, stormed into our bedroom, her face ablaze with fury. What on earth are you doing? How could you raise such a commotion that your voice echoes beyond this room? My mother-in-law chastised me harshly, her face contorted in disapproval. Though my father-in-law didn't express his feelings openly, I could sense his displeasure. As my husband departed to meet his friends, I was left alone, engulfed in sadness, spending the first night of the holiday in a flood of tears. The next morning, my mother-in-law aroused me from my slumber, her face twisting into a scowl upon seeing my swollen eyes. Really, you're such a fool. It's your first holiday since you got married, and this is how you present yourself. You're supposed to bring blessings to this family with your kindness, but it seems you have a long way to go. Her words were like adding fuel to the fire, and as she ordered me to wash my face and prepare for work, all I wanted was to flee to my mother's house. I glanced at my watch, contemplating leaving, when my husband stumbled in, drunk and incapable of rising until well past noon. Wake up. I urged. Just a bit more sleep, he mumbled. Do you even realize the time? My parents are waiting for us. I don't feel good. You're being unreasonable. Why does it have to be today? We can visit another day. Just then, my mother-in-law interjected, why are you pestering your husband when he's clearly exhausted? Stop bothering him and come help serve the elders. I was wondering where you'd gone off to, only to find you nagging your husband again. Mother, I apologize, but it's getting late, and I need to visit my own mother. Since Max is so tired, I'll let him rest a bit more. I asserted, my frustration evident. What? She exclaimed. I know I've just married into this family and there's a lot I don't understand, but why is it that your son does nothing, yet the daughter-in-law is expected to work tirelessly to serve you? Take yesterday, for example. You called me foolish, but from my perspective, the reason I'm acting this way is because you've raised your son with the wrong values. Hey Nora, did you just speak disrespectfully to my mother? Max accused. Who's the one being rude here? You're the one acting unreasonably, and my mom doesn't even scold you, she takes your side. And here you are, expressing your grievances. What are you talking about? Just because I did some chores over the holiday, I'm arrogant now. I've been patient with you all this time, I deserve to have a say in whether I visit my family or not. Why don't you try working at my parents' house all day without a single meal? What? Someone might think you're being starved if they heard you talking like that. You said you didn't want to eat, right? Do you even realize how many meals I cooked yesterday? And yet, I was told to get rid of the leftover food in the fridge that was about to be thrown away, so of course, I didn't want to eat. I treated you like you were part of our family. But tell me, mother, have you ever considered me as part of yours? With such unequal treatment, I can't stay in this marriage. I apologized hastily before leaving their house immediately. The relatives who were there for the holiday were stunned, and my mother-in-law and father-in-law were furious, but I didn't waver and simply left. I went straight to my parents' house, catching them off guard as I recounted the entire ordeal, detailing not just the events of yesterday, but the ongoing conflicts with my husband as well. My parents were deeply distressed to see their recently married daughter return during the first holiday, declaring her desire for a divorce. Nora, please, let's calm down and think this through. What about Max? I don't care about him anymore. All he did was sleep, and at night, he went out to drink and have fun with his friends. He even questioned why we had to visit your house now and suggested we could come another time. So, I made my decision and came here. Oh my dear, I understand it's hard, 
But in marriage, especially as a daughter-in-law, there are things you just have to endure. You can't simply give up and leave. My sweet girl, I know it's been tough for you. I never thought Max would act this way, I'm very disappointed in him. But dear, are we really going to consider divorce as an option? My father finally voiced his concern, his voice filled with a mix of disappointment and worry. What is unjust is simply unjust. We shouldn't fear the idea of divorce if it spares our daughter from suffering. Don't just stand by, call Max over so we can talk this through. My mother suggested, showing her concern. Mom, he won't come just because you ask him to. I've been deceived into this marriage. He claims to be a good son verbally, but his actions tell a different story. He expects me to follow his orders while he does absolutely nothing. Overwhelmed by my emotions, I couldn't hold back any longer and my suppressed tears burst forth. My parents sighed, seeing my pain, and urged me to go inside and rest. As time went by, I began to regret my decision of not going straight back to my own house and causing worry for my parents. The holidays had ended, yet there was no word from my husband. I didn't return home, instead, I went to work straight from my parents' house. I saw my husband, who had arrived at work before me, but he acted as if I didn't exist. I chose to ignore him as well, but after lunch, he hurried over to me, a sense of urgency in his voice. Honey, you need to rush to the hospital right now. My mom fell in the bathroom. What? I have a crucial meeting coming up, I responded, my mind on my work responsibilities. What? It's an emergency. My mom fell, and all you can think about is a meeting. I'm sorry, but what about you? Why can't you go? I have to stay here. But as the daughter-in-law, you can ask for time off. It's not the same for me. What? How can you bring up being a daughter-in-law at a time like this? If it's not urgent, you should go. Damn it. What's more important right now, my mom or your work? Witnessing his stubbornness even in such a critical situation made up my mind, I needed to divorce him as soon as possible. Even though it had been less than a year since we got married, I couldn't bear the discomfort any longer. If I continued to live this way, it wasn't worth it. I would end up serving my husband's parents, unappreciated, working tirelessly till the end of my days. I felt sympathy for his mother, but I couldn't bring myself to go to the hospital. My husband was furious, whether it was because he had to go to the hospital himself, or because he couldn't manipulate me to do his bidding. He incessantly called me, but amidst my own busyness and my desire to avoid speaking to him, I disregarded all of his attempts to reach out. Agitated by my unresponsiveness and my failure to conform to his expectations of a daughter-in-law, not visiting the hospital when his mother was admitted, he approached my parents' house, ranting about my supposed negligence. My mother listened patiently to his tirade, but his words were so over-the-top and unreasonable that she soon lost her patience and felt thoroughly disillusioned with him. In a swift motion fueled by disappointment, she rose to her feet, retrieved the divorce papers from a drawer, and flung them at my husband, if you are so dissatisfied with our daughter, then divorce her. I was hoping to avoid confrontation, but how dare you come here and behave so insolently. Did you really think we would tolerate such disrespect? She challenged him. Tell me, if I were to fall and end up in the hospital, would you rush to my side, forsaking your own daughter? I never pegged you as such a selfish person. Mother, you're also a woman. Why are you saying these things? When a woman gets married, she's expected to leave her family behind and fully integrate into her new family, he argued, attempting to justify his stance. What? She retorted, incredulously. I have never once considered severing ties with my daughter just because she got married. Just divorce her. I have raised our daughter with nothing but love and devotion, and this is what you dare to say. Honey, she turned to my father, please, fill out these papers. Sign them and get this man out of our house. Let him go and devote himself to his parents. 
She was furious, it's outrageous. Have I been fooling around? Have I gambled away our savings? Why should I be treated this way? I can't believe this man, she continued, addressing my father. Are you hearing this? Does our daughter deserve such treatment simply because she's a daughter-in-law? She's a woman, and I want her to be happy. I refuse to see her treated like a servant. Fill out those papers now. No, my husband finally spoke, his voice firm, I won't do it. I want to stay married to Nora. You can't force my decision, I refuse to live with you under these conditions. If you genuinely want to be with me, then start treating my parents the same way I was expected to treat yours, starting today. Only then will I consider it. I thought laying down these terms would surely lead him to sign the divorce papers. However, to my surprise, he agreed, claiming he would treat my parents just as I had treated his. I was left dumbfounded, but I could see the flames of anger in my mother's eyes. From that moment on, the unexpected began to unfold. All right, she declared, starting now, you will call us every morning to greet us. If you need to visit your parents, you must visit our house either before or after. If Nora is expected to work at your parents' house, then you should come here and do the same. When it's a holiday, and Nora is cooking all day without any breaks, you will do the same. And when is your day off? You will spend it here, working continuously without eating. Can you handle that? My husband, to my astonishment, simply said it wasn't a big deal and agreed to the terms. He even added that if he managed to complete all the chores smoothly over the weekend, it would prove that I had exaggerated the whole issue, and I would owe him an apology. Determined to give my husband a reality check, my mother instructed me to stay in the bedroom while she put him to work, cooking and cleaning. Then, mirroring his mother's actions, she presented him with leftovers from the fridge, suggesting he eat them. My husband grimaced, comparing the food to dog feed, and cursed under his breath. Undeterred by his complaints, my mother calmly discarded the food and continued to assign him chores. Exhausted, he began to protest, claiming she was making him work unnecessarily. My mother sharply reminded him that a man should not complain so much. Observing this, I couldn't help but feel a sense of retribution. Returning home, physically drained, my husband could only groan in pain. Meanwhile, I dressed up and headed out to enjoy a night with my friends. His subsequent outburst of anger made me wonder if he had finally understood how I felt all along. In that moment, I felt a sense of triumph. How does it feel? It's awful, isn't it? Just like how I felt, and yet you went out and had fun, I retorted. Do you realize what I went through? I was so devastated that I cried the entire night, ending up with swollen eyes. And what did your mother say when she saw me? She told me I was foolish for weeping and that I should be more generous and understanding. She insisted that I should exhibit kindness. It's hard to muster kindness when you're being treated unfairly, but that's what your mother advised. I thought this would be the breaking point for my husband, and he would finally consent to a divorce. So, I retrieved the divorce papers from my briefcase and flung them in his direction. To my astonishment, he dropped to his knees and started pleading for my forgiveness. Honey, I'm truly sorry. I had no idea. At first, I thought your mother was overreacting, but now I see she was right. It wasn't just about the workload, it was about you working tirelessly in a household that wasn't your own while I was at rest. I realize now how unjust I have been, and I am deeply sorry. Could you find it in your heart to forgive me just this once? To give me another chance? Just one more day? His appeal seemed sincere, but I knew he had a long way to go to make amends. Following that day, at my husband's request, I opted to assist his parents. His mother had taken a fall and was incapable of managing basic tasks, so I helped her with her personal care, including washing her hair, and prepared all of her meals. However, I could see the worry etched across my husband's face. 
and why wouldn't he be worried? According to our agreement, anything I did for his parents, he would have to reciprocate at my parents' house. He seemed particularly anxious and implored me not to do anything for his parents, which was odd. What happened to being a dutiful son? Now that I'm finally able to genuinely help your parents, you want to back out? I questioned. Honey, I was wrong. I admit it, I was completely out of line. From this point on, I promise not to force you into doing anything you're uncomfortable with. Let's just agree to take care of our respective parents independently. What do you think? Seeing the earnest look in his eyes, filled with hope and expectation, I couldn't help but burst into laughter. He should have come to this realization much sooner. He had expected me to be gracious and kind to his parents, while he criticized and demeaned me. In that moment, I felt a wave of happiness wash over me. Eventually, our families agreed to a more balanced arrangement where we would each take care of our own parents. There were no longer any obligatory chores, and if any assistance or requests were needed, they would be brought up and discussed during family meetings. This arrangement has held up smoothly to this day. My mother, acting on my behalf, kept the divorce papers filed, and this turned out to have a positive impact, making our marriage more stable for the time being. When I inquired why she had the divorce papers in her drawer, she explained that it was a family tradition to keep a set of divorce papers ready, just in case. Do you think my relationship with your father was always perfect? She asked me. There were times when I thought I had reached my limit and this was my last chance. But holding on to those papers helped me navigate through our toughest times. I couldn't help but laugh. It was then that I realized that the troubles between a couple are their own to solve. In a twist of fate, those divorce papers my mother held on to helped me overcome my own marital crisis. Now, my husband and I continue our marriage with considerably fewer complaints. Interestingly, I found myself willingly taking care of my in-laws, not because I was obliged to, but because I genuinely wanted to. They started to appreciate my efforts when they had no expectations, and my husband began to reciprocate by taking good care of my parents. I believe this is what we both wanted all along. While others find holiday gatherings stressful, I no longer suffer from any stress-related ailments. These days, when I visit my in-laws, my mother-in-law prepares all the ingredients beforehand, and the entire family comes together to cook the holiday meals. This has become a fun tradition in itself. Honey, to be honest, I thought it would be awkward. I used to think that someone who knew what they were doing should just get it over with quickly. But when we all pitch in together, we not only create beautiful memories, but we also have a great time. I thanked my husband, realizing that I had learned a valuable lesson and apologized for my previous demanding behavior. Looking back, I remembered how angry and resentful I felt when I was hospitalized and he didn't visit. But now, I understand that it was enough for his son to be there, he didn't need to come if he was busy. Now, it's my mother-in-law who apologizes to me first. Another significant change is that after visiting my in-laws during the holidays, we can go back to my family's home to spend time together. My husband, who once expected to be treated as a guest, now acts more like a son, always looking around to see if there's anything he can help fix. I think my mother's strict training played a role in this change, it's like a side effect syndrome. In the beginning, it didn't matter which path we took, as long as we reached our destination. But now, I can confidently say that our marriage is democratic and fair, and this makes me very happy.